Hey, welcome back. We have Angela Marafino. Is that how you pronounce it, Angela? Yeah. Hi, Matt. How are you? Hi, good. Glad you could join us here today. Thank you for putting Thanks. this together. Happy to be here. Yeah. You, so do you have like a Hogwarts uh, outfit on there? Do, do I see? <laughs> you know, I was trying, but I don't like have a specific one. Like I don't have any of the merch and swag from, you know, Harry Potter world or whatever, but I did my best. <laughs> You got the glasses, actually. They they work really well for the. For the my, these are actually my normal glasses, though. So. Even better, <laughs> even better. So you're co-founder at Room Four Security, and the co-organizer for WoSec Seattle. Tell me about that a little bit. Sure. So I actually started off with uh, the Denver, the local Denver chapter. Um, prior to moving to Seattle. So in Denver, it was just me kind of running this small group and, and getting things off the ground. I saw a need for a women only security meetup and, and there was really more focus on developers and programming and groups like that. Um, so uh, after meeting with Chloe Mistagi and the Women Hackers Slack channel, which is huge, if if uh, you've never heard of that, that's kind of where this started. But um, started the Denver chapter last year, moved here to Seattle in January and got together with two other women, Melissa Benoit and Kate Ferris, and they're local here to Seattle. So uh, the three of us are starting the Seattle chapter and just kind of doing fun things. Obviously, um, we got kind of cut short with our in-person meetups, but we're trying to keep it going virtually. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Uh, we, we have so much to, to go to, to drop the hurdle so that we can kind of even the playing field and let women take the rightful place among infosec and, and computer science. Um, right. So it, it sounds like you, you're you a professional herder of cats. You, your, your background <laughs> is, it, it didn't start out in computers, and but you have connectivity, you, you have relationship skills. Um, but bringing that into infosec for the, for the last period of time, you have two bachelor's degrees Correct. One is in legal assistant studies, but, but tell me about fine arts. <laughs> um, all right, it's fun, right? Um, my problem with it was I couldn't pick pick one particular medium. So, uh, you know, in order to really, I think, excel in being an artist, you either have to teach something or be really good at one discipline. Um, and I didn't want to do either one. So uh, way too, way too many um interests and just kind of all over the place so I had a blast and my parents were always you know telling me to do what you enjoyed the most which I now right I don't think was the best advice but um, <laughs> it was great at the time and then I uh, ended up getting a job at a law firm at some point and thought I can do this and I really enjoyed the research and education so I uh, went back and got a second bachelor's for that and almost went to law school and then uh, just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't bring myself to be an attorney, but you never know. You, n you never know where life's going to take you. But uh, I've really, I I've learned a lot from both of those uh, time periods in my life. Uh, but yeah, definitely different paths. I feel like I've lived three different lives already. If my, if my own history is any, is to be trusted, I, I would say that the unique path is the best path. So right. the one that you choose you know, you can't you can't be doing what everybody else does and do this and then do this and then do this and then do this. Sometimes you, when I started out as a vocal performance major, I ended okay. up as pre-med before coming back to computer science, which was my first love in the first place. Awesome. So uh, Megatron AL, what the heck is that? Um, Are you a Transformers <laughs> fan or AL? I mean. No, so it's basically um, my mentor, uh just kind of gave me the name megatron uh because once i actually got into cybersecurity, i hit the ground running and just started doing everything i possibly could to get my feet wet and and really dive into networking and things and so he just kept calling me megatron and so i've adopted it and that's just who i am it's just part of who i am now <laughs> whether i like it or not <laughs> that's awesome you must give yourself a nim or one will be assigned to you and exactly sometimes it's not nearly so awesome as that <laughs> So I'm going to back away now and, and let you take over, but uh, we'll look forward to chatting at the end. Good work. Thanks, Matt. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Harry Potter and the career of secrets, what we can all learn from year two at Hogwarts. 
the storyline of that being the Chamber of Secrets, but I, I wanted to mesh these two together. My name is Angela Marafino, uh, currently the co-organizer of WOSEC Seattle and the Denver chapter as well. And I'm also co-founder of Room for Security. We are an organization focused on, uh, we're a not-for-profit organization focused on providing um, time-saving resources for those trying to get into cybersecurity. Uh, I think our website is actually going to launch tomorrow. So if you Google it right now, you probably won't find much, but after tomorrow, probably be around. Um, so definitely just want to save people time it can take you know over a year just to figure out what you want to do and we hope to reduce that time greatly for those trying to get into cybersecurity. i took the non-traditional or a non-traditional route to get into cybersecurity. Uh, i went to art uh, went to school for art the first time and pre-law the second time so uh, definitely nothing related to security or technology however i was working with digital mediums uh, throughout my previous careers. And to jump right in here, um, this talk is basically for beginners uh, in cybersecurity or those who have just started their career, just to give some advice and kind of have a little bit of fun as well. It's also useful as a guide for those trying to mentor other individuals that may be younger um, to give them something to think about early on that correlates to a fun theme that they may be interested in. Um, I won't get super technical today. I'll be focusing more on the soft skills that are um, going to be useful throughout your career. I know some of us in technology tend to be introverts more than uh, extroverts, but you know that's something to work on if, if you haven't already started that journey. Um, and definitely you know, reach out to me if you would like the slides afterwards. I'll provide those to you as well. I would love for these to be shared any way possible. I'm also um, in the Discord channel. If you have any questions, I'll be there afterwards. Um, and I think on Twitter as well, you can ask questions. Uh, little disclaimer, this presentation assumes a basic knowledge of the Harry Potter series, whether it be reading the books or watching the movies um, in order to understand and benefit from the basic concepts. But uh, I don't think you have to have seen any of them. I'll try to explain what's going on throughout, um, but also, since we do have a little bit more time on our hands that we would have pre previously, I do recommend that you drop everything you're doing immediately and watch all the movies back to back because they're amazing. Um, some of the key points discussed may seem like no brainers um, or may come easy to some people. However, these are things that I believe should be covered at the beginning of your career so that you can focus on what your strengths and weaknesses are and build from there. Um, I did want to choose a more fun and less technical topic to present on due to everything that's going on uh, with COVID-19. So just trying to keep it light. I know most of the other talks are a bit more technical, but I, I wanted to have fun. Uh, so feel free to have fun and nerd out with me, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. All right, so the beginning of the Chamber of Secrets. This whole story is about a chamber of secrets. <laughs> which has been opened and nobody really knows why or how or where it is even located. Uh, the main thing I wanted to take away from this Hermione Granger quote was that, you know, she takes the first step in asking questions and, and being inquisitive, right? So that's very important to do throughout your career, um, even when you're, you know, working, not just learning. So be inquisitive. The more questions you ask, obviously, the more answers you're going to get. Um, don't be afraid of looking like a know-it-all. Your peers will reach out to you for advice later on as a leader if they recognize you as someone who is comfortable asking questions and, and learning. Being a good listener is also a part of the learning process. So asking questions and listening to what the response is so that you can internalize what you've heard and retain that information. Um, even if you have the answer to something and you think you know what it is, uh, being able to anticipate what some questions are that may benefit your coworkers or um, other students in your classes that can help them as well. One of the main things that happens in the storyline is that the antagonist, which is Voldemort, whether you've seen the, <laughs> the movies or read the books, you've probably heard the word Voldemort. So his name is typically uh, not a fan of being hurt. So 
people like to call him he who must not be named instead. Um, this quote is by Hermione when someone basically says you must be brave at mentioning his name. She says, fear of a name will increase his fear of the thing itself. Just because something may seem scary or frustrating at first, don't be, don't be afraid to go, you know, and seek it out, right? Go to meetings, go to events, do the networking. Um, also, if there's a topic that you want to learn that you're interested in, just because you don't know anything about it, uh, go ask others. Put yourself in the middle of situations where you're going to hear um, more information about that topic. You're only going to learn it by immersing yourself in it. Um, and that goes for cybersecurity in general. Uh, but, you know, putting yourself out there is, is going to help you. The reward is obviously going to be greater in doing those things that seem hard than the things that come easy to you. Um, Harry Potter and his friends typically uh, would take dark arts classes, which is similar to cybersecurity professionals taking something like malware reverse engineering training to find out how attackers write malicious software. So getting in that mind of the bad guy or the attacker uh, is still important, right? So uh, looking at malware for the first time or ransomware may seem scary and you have no idea what it looks like. Once you start doing that training, it may come a lot easier and you would be surprised at what you've learned. Uh, this is a is an interesting uh, point in the storyline because there's this guy named Gilderoy Lockhart who seems like he's this fantastic wizard. He's popular. He's done all these things. Um, he's written many books, and you know all the women swoon o swoon over his charm. Um, it ends up turning out that he's a huge fake and a phony, and uh, some of his peers I think kind of you know had an idea that that was going on, but some of the kids really didn't notice, um, or some of the women as well. So um, I just wanted to take away from this that make sure your mentors are uh, actually who they say they are with everything being virtual now, right? Somebody could be something that they aren't pretending to be, so or that they, yeah, that they aren't pretending to be. So do your fact checking. Make sure that the mentors that you do have are upstanding, right? Um, read their books. Make sure it makes sense and and you know, see who they associate with and go to networking events, meet them in person if you can in the future. Um, Harry had many mentors throughout his time at Hogwarts, uh, Dumbledore, which was his um, headmaster, Sirius, which was his godfather, and even Snape, who didn't really get along with him, but he was still looking out for him, whether he knew it or not. Um, so good people will reach out to you. Sometimes you will need to ask for help, but most people in the community are willing to help you uh, within cybersecurity. And you never know, you may have skills that they don't, right? So you, you could learn from each other. <laughs> In the beginning of this storyline, Ron ended up breaking his wand, which obviously is a, not a good thing. Um, your main tool is broken. So every time he tries to do a spell, it backfires. He here was trying to stand up for his friend Hermione when she got called a, a bad name. And he said, eat slugs. And it ended up being him eating slugs rather than the other person. But um, they went off to go to their friend Hagrid's um, hut where he lived. And he said, they said, he'll know what to do. We'll go to Hagrid's. He'll figure it out. Uh, but instead of doing some fancy spell or, or, you know, having a great way to solve the solution, he handed them a bucket and said, there's only one solution here, and that's to wait it out. Uh, so sometimes the best solution is the simplest specialty products and services that may cost a lot of money aren't always the answer um, you can buy tons of devices and uh, make make yourself feel like you're secure but really you know go back to basics um, use what you already have on hand and look to open source options as well to save money and there's plenty out there so you can definitely have a choice of what you're using in their quest to figure out what's going on with the Chamber of Secrets and you know get some answers to solve the problem. Um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione decide to make some Polyjuice Potion. This is something that will let them transform into other students uh, and, and pretend to be their nemesis's friends. So they can try to get some answers out of him. Uh, and once Ron and Harry figure out that uh, Hermione says it's gonna take a month to make the Polyjuice Potion, they're like, are you kidding me? That's such a long time. Um, be patient. It's it's going to be like that through your entire career when you're learning. 
new tools, new languages. It's going to take a while to learn, but once you've man mastered those skills, you'll have them, right? And you can use them in the future and you won't have to spend that really long time uh, preparing. What you will need to do is continue to brush up on valuable skills that you don't use every day because most jobs you get, it's going to be different than, uh, they're all going to be different. So make sure you brush up on skills that you may need in the future, but don't use every day. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for help if you've forgotten something as well. Um, an example of some really helpful skills is regex. Um, if you've never heard of regex or regular expressions, it's something that can help you um, do things quicker and it's very useful. It's just something like um, Python, for example, would be very useful and helpful if you're not specifically coding every day. So keep that stuff in your back pocket and brush up on it regularly. back to Bron, uh, Ron's broken wand. He wanted to help Harry during a sports match when he didn't, uh, he saw that there was a, a ball that um, was cursed during the match. So the, a bludger is one of the sports balls. He um, was going to do a spell and all of a sudden, you know, Hermione says, don't do that with your broken wand. You could, you could hurt your friend, right? So um, look out for your team is the takeaway here. Uh, Hermione was always looking out for the two of them and just, you know, try to try to keep an eye out for everybody just because um, you know what's right and how to do things one way doesn't mean that everybody does. Um, so keep an eye out for others that may be doing something risky. If you're training someone or a team, don't th let them make any dangerous mistakes if you can help it. Um, some things will be <laughs> more dangerous than others. Obviously making mistakes is part of the learning process, of course, like failure. Um, but, but as the trainer, you're there to make sure that they don't accidentally take a server down, for example, or something worse. Oculus Reparo is uh, a spell that's done frequently throughout the storyline. Um, Harry was always breaking his glasses and Hermione or someone else was there to fix them for him. Um, in this part of the storyline, they're both, uh, they're all rather young, all the, the kids. And so they don't know very many spells, but Hermione being the intellect and, and learning and studying more than the others knew this spell, uh, even though they didn't. So she's helpful as much as she can be. So if you know an answer to something or how to complete a task that someone else doesn't, share your knowledge. Most cybersecurity professionals want to help others in the community, and there's a lot that you can learn from teaching others as well. Um, knowledge sharing is huge. I mean, this can be done by mentoring, being a teacher's assistant, uh, starting a blog or a podcast, or simply, simply posting things that you're working on on social media or a GitHub account if you have one. Um, the amount of virtual knowledge sharing that's taken place since everything has become virtual uh, due to COVID-19 from public conferences like this one and small meetups has been a really overwhelming amount. So there's a wealth of knowledge out there. Just put yourself out there and um, help others. Again, Hermione with the intellect, she, um, you know, always knew some spell to to help out. So. Here's another um, example of Gilderoy Lockhart being a phony where he brought a bunch of flying pixies to the students class, unleashed them, and basically didn't know how to get them back in their cage, of course. So he basically just looks at the three, uh, Hermione, Ron, and Harry, and says, you guys figure it out, right? So um, at first it seems like, you know, what are they gonna do? And then she says Immobilis and everything kind of freezes and all the pixies are uh, stuck in midair. So you know, that didn't obviously solve the problem completely, but it put a pause on it, right? So when that scene cut, they could probably figure out what to do next. So sometimes when you don't know what to do, just pause, take a step back, um, go take a walk if you need to, um, take a break, come back to the problem. You'd be surprised how easily, and I'm sure you've already <laughs> experienced falling down rabbit holes and getting stuck there for hours um, and missing a solution altogether or you know getting distracted by something else that's super interesting in cybersecurity. I know I've done that a million times. Um, try working on something else and coming back to it when you have a clean slate to look at the problem from another angle. Um, sometimes you'll get it immediately when you when you come back to the situation having just stepped away for a minute. This is one of my favorite parts where the boys get stuck not being able to board the train to Hogwarts. 
uh, at the beginning of the story. So they, right, hypothetically wouldn't be able to get to school if they can't get on the bus, or I'm sorry, get on the train to go to school. Um, so, you know, Harry's like, well, maybe we should just go wait by the car. And Ron says, the car. And the car happened to be a magical flying car. So they take the car, try to catch up with the train and end up doing that and getting to school. Uh, but what you can take away from this is be creative, come up with new ways to accomplish a task or a goal and, and get to where you're trying to go. Uh, if it hasn't been done before, be the first to do it um, and think outside the box. One of the things to keep in mind with this, however, is uh, make sure you don't break any laws. A good example of that is uh, coming up shortly, but when they get to school, you um, find out that, right, everybody knows that they took the stolen car, they were seen by muggles or non-magical people, um, and of course that's not great. So uh, Snape reminded them that uh, they are in trouble, they could have risked exposing the entire magical world. So don't forget, um, some of the things you do aren't supposed to be known by others. Um, what the real takeaway here is to know your scope, always know your rules of engagement, follow them. Some offensive security uh, assessments that you're going to do. Um, people don't need to know your identity. You need to remain hidden, uh, but also make sure that you're on the same page as your client. Last year's example of two coal fire pen testers getting arrested for trying to do a physical penetration test at a courthouse ended up badly for them. Uh, they did end up getting re released, but just a prime example of. Um, not being on the same page with your client and or not you know staying in line with your rules of engagement taking notes is huge in cybersecurity. Um, i know it seems like it's all fun and hacking but at some point you will probably have to write a report and good documentation is going to come in handy especially when you need to refer back to how to solve a problem uh, Reports are also required for some roles such as vulnerability assessments and pen tests. If you're involved in compliance and management, it's likely that someone's going to want to see your logs or uh, your notes at some point as well. So make sure you take great notes or at least have someone on your team that's really good at it. Dumbledore was kind of always uh, being the headmaster, kind of always the one to give out great quotes uh, and good advice. So one of his one of his quotes was, help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. This was something that Harry really remembered. And I think he, you know, um, wanted to be seen in, in Dumbledore's eyes as like, brave and trustworthy as well. Building trust and solid network in cybersecurity can go a really long way. You never know when you might need someone's help or when they might need yours as well, but um, build that network and do it now. Start today. Um, I don't know if you've all watched the keynote this morning, but uh, Tara Wheeler, her book, Women in Tech, um, she mentions that something like 90% of all security jobs that you take during your career are through word of mouth being your personal network. So do not underestimate the power that a referral can have in getting your foot in the door at a company, especially if said company gets like over a million resumes a year and only hires about 1% of those candidates. You find out towards the end of the story that a lot of the tribulations that Harry has throughout this year at Hogwarts are due to this little guy, Dobie the house elf. Um, he basically was trying to prevent Harry from going back to Hogwarts this year due to all the danger that's supposedly going to happen and ends up happening. Um, but he goes to his house and tries to tell him, you know, I want to tell you something and, and why you can't go back. And it's difficult for me to tell you why and Harry basically just says well why don't you sit down and, and tell me from there um, to which Dobie freaks out and starts crying and <laughs> Harry's like apologizing and just saying you know I'm sorry I didn't mean to make you cry I just you know said sit down and uh, basically what it was is Dobie had never been asked to sit down before um, he was always treated as someone lower than wizards and witches and had never been asked so um, what you can take away from this is to be humble regardless of your success no matter you know how much you make or what your title is, we're all humans. Um, remain someone who is loyal and trustworthy. Um, 
and you know always always treat your peers and everyone else regardless of level like you would want to be treated um, one of the quotes that I've always remembered is uh, to treat those who are considered to be a lower level than you um, as you want to want to be treated like any like a janitor or receptionist or an intern just because you may be a CEO doesn't mean that you should treat them worse uh, than your peers so they might end up being your boss one day and you never know All right, so the key takeaways here are knowledge sharing, um, get out in the community, go meet other people and share what you know, um, have confidence, don't give up, be brave, uh, network, ask many, many, many questions, have patience, build trust, know your scope, don't break any laws, uh, be helpful, Look out for your team if you can and take detailed notes. It'll help you and others in the future. Thank you. And thanks for having me, Grim and Chris and Renee. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I know it was pretty straightforward, uh, but I'll be around to answer any questions in the Discord channel afterwards. Um, and you can also find me on Twitter, uh, Megatron AL. Wow, where to begin? <laughs> That was great. Thank you so much. Uh, sure. you know, I'm jotting down notes, just things that, <laughs> things about what you said, and, and you know, so many of them land so well with things that I've seen work well in, in in careers and in what I've seen in my own. Be inquisitive, listen, ask, and help others. Don't be afraid to basically try new things that are new or scary. Having a mentor, or somebody to look for up to, but be careful who it is. Make sure that they're not full of crap. Um, be patient. Um, yeah, uh, do your research. Try not to be discouraged. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, can you email me on a regular <laughs> basis and remind me of these things? Because sure, I'll they send are you some one of the hardest me. things. Absolutely, <laughs> that would be wonderful. Um, Regex for the win. Right. Python. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for giving us real, real pointers. Uh, things that people can point into, uh, can dive into. Um, you know, I wrote down, don't panic. But it reminded me of, uh, you know. Thomas Watson, the original guy from IBM, who actually on his desk had a sign, a little placard that said, think. So when you when you have a think pad, that's where it comes from. It, it's his, okay. it comes from his, his little sign that said think, which I learned that from a guy named Ed Scotus, who has a plaque on his desk. He, he teaches or he taught many, many people to do uh, security incident response and incident handling. And his plaque said, remain calm. So, you know, all these things are coming back. Right. Um, rules of engagement, they're really important. I do want to point out, I believe um, the the guys from Coal Fire were doing their best to uh, to stay within their rules of engagement. They just didn't yeah. realize that the county and the state had a pissing match going on. But right. we'll leave that go. You, your, your point is really well placed. Um, take notes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, build a trust and a solid network. And stay humble. I love I love to stay humble. And to me, I've seen and I've known so many people who are great, and some of them truly are great, and some of them are great in their mind. Um, mm -hmm. But it strikes me that humility is not trying to downplay how great you are, but more the recognition that no matter how amazing you are at any one particular thing or group of things, the person next to you who isn't is just as valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, wow. No, that's so much. Uh, okay, now I should probably get to other people's <laughs> questions, but no, oh, great talk. Thank you so much. Um, so, Alden asks, any online communities that I could join? I don't live in the US. Um, is that in this chat or in the Discord? Uh, that's that's in this webinar. I can throw it at you and you can answer it. Tell you what, I will throw it at you. I can assign that to. I just want to say, Alden, if you're if you're not male, <laughs> if you don't identify as male, I have tons for you to join because that's what I focus on. Um, I know Alden could be a, a, a male or female name, so just wanted to get that straight. But um, WOSEC actually has international chapters, and if there isn't one in your city or local to where you live, you could start one. So definitely um, Google WOSEC and, and 
or reach out to me and we'll figure out if there's one close to you. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Rebecca says, the Harry Potter presentation was awesome. Love the creativity. Uh, Thanks, Leandro says, Angela, I'm a digital marketing professional researching and, and learning CyberSec to help in my career. Have you some appointment to help me? Hmm. I'll throw that at you. You don't have to answer that. Reach out to me. Sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. One of the main things, Matt, was that, you know, I just wanted to show as an example that you can kind of find cybersecurity in everything, right? Um, it doesn't have to just be all tech and tools and hacking. Um, it's an everyday thing. I know I am I was already a paranoid person before I got into cybersecurity, and now I just feel like I fit in because we all are, right? And so um, you can find cybersecurity tips in everything you do, many stories, movies. It's all over the place. Uh, one last one from, I'm going to slaughter this, sorry, <laughs> Joao uh, Chiaka, please forgive me, sorry. Where's Angela in the Noobs Track channel in Discord? There's too much praise for her over here. Awesome presentation. All caps. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions, guys? Uh, Alden says, I'm male, so reach out to her, and, and I'm sure that she can still we'll point you in a good out. direction. Or, yeah. Create a Discord conversation and people can help chime in. Anybody Perfect. else? I'll be on I'll be on Twitter if anybody wants wants to reach out. It's Megatron AL, and also I'll be in the Discord channel, also floating around. All right, Angela, thank you again so much. Thank awesome you, Matt. I'll be sure to email you weekly. Don't worry. All right, please do. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.